Singapore's opportunities and dilemma. If you look at Singapore, we have many things going great for us. One of the first countries to embrace digitalization. It's a first class nation, perhaps rounded in a third world, third world neighborhood or second class neighborhood. Our education system is second to none. Our IP protection laws are solid. Infrastructure is second to none. And it's a global city where talented people from everywhere around the world would like to settle down in Singapore. It's a place that they don't mind working and having a life here. And that is the key strength Singapore needs to continue to build. Having said that, end of the day, we are still a red dot nation. We have little land, our resources are limit limited, and we basically do not have a domestic market. And what does that mean? That means we have to be very good in everything else that's within our control. And today, if you look at Singapore as a semiconductor nation, and like I said, we're one of the pioneers in the world in certain segments. We do not have any local semiconductor champion today. Zero. We used to have a couple, okay, but all of them today belong to foreign uh, entities. We have zero. And that is the key differentiation between us than any other semiconductor nations. And this is important because we've got to balance the MNC strength with some local champions. We need to address the key challenges. Establish integrated supply support system befitting a strategic industry. And it is not me who is saying that it's a strategic industry. Look at what is happening in the trade war. What is behind the trade war? the fighting for control of semiconductor technologies, IPs and know-how. And this is a fight that's going on and will go on for the next 20 years between the two superpowers in economy. So is anyone in this room feels that this is not strategic? We need to optimize the public-private partnerships. Singapore has pretty strong public facilities in, in our top universities, in our top research institutes, and they have done a good job. But these facilities, semiconductor facilities, technology facilities, needs to be better optimized. As a nation, we have no business running them eight to five and not working on weekends. It needs to be run 24 by seven. It needs to be optimized for the whole country. And there, countries like Taiwan does it better than us. High cost. As you all know, this is one of the most expensive cities in the world. At times, I feel that some of us take that with pride. But high cost is bad for business. High cost is bad for manufacturing. So we need incentives to decentralize, to balance and make it a level playing field. Another thing we need to do is to play not just from a Singapore scale, but from an ASEAN scale. Just like how Germany, UK, leverage the whole European Union. If you look at Infineon, the number one power semiconductor company in the world, they have half of their wafer fabs in some of the low, in some of the most cost-effective countries in Europe, like Austria and so on. Our policies are smart. We have intelligent, sorry, our policies are good in general, but it needs to be progressive policies. At times, at a working level, they can be very rigid. So today, if you look at it, if you analyze it, China for the last 25 to 30 years have boosted their semiconductor industry mainly by the investments of the state. So you have now the number two superpower that is focusing on semiconductor. How do we compete with that? It needs to be a level playing field. And Singapore can't follow the formula of China. But we can't be giving incentives like single digit to this strategic industry when the rest of the semiconductor nations are still supporting their strategic industry to the extent of 25, 30% incentives. Right? So we've got to think about these things. And also to enable local ownership. 
So we need semiconductors are set to transform our world. 